the scene that you just saw was real. I was trying to accomplish something and I ended up having a, a missile, a literal missile, come flying out of my thickness planer, go whizzing by my hands and my body and my ear uh, at a great rate of speed. And I, looking at the film, uh, the video afterwards, I can see that had I been in the wrong position doing the stupid thing that I did, that that could have hurt, <laughs> either broken ribs, taken my ear off, uh, hit my hit my glasses, any number of things. Hell, I don't know, could have hit me in the forehead and killed me. So anyway, kickback on a thickness planer is real if you're as stupid as I am. What were the mistakes that I made? Well, the primary mistake, I was trying to avoid snipe on a uh, jaw for a vice. And I just, it was really nice cherry wood. I didn't want any snipe on it. And so I wanted to avoid it. I thought I had seen Next Level Carpenter uh, do a technique where he used a sled and then put some sacrificial pieces on that sled with his workpiece. And uh, I thought he used two-sided tape to do that. Uh, I went back and looked at his video later, found out that I did a lot of things wrong. Uh, I put mine with two-sided tape next to my workpiece so that I wouldn't get any snipe on the workpiece because it would be, this was sticking further out, so it would be, the snipe would be on here. Uh, but uh, he actually put his work, his sacrificial item on the end of his workpiece and longer. So my primary mistake was the length of this. Nothing should go into these jaws here, even if it's attached to something else, unless it's 15 inches in length so that it's underneath uh, a roller at all times. All right, so that was the first mistake, that this was too short. I think I'd have been okay if I had used pieces that were 15 inches or longer for my thickness planer. Secondly, I used the wrong kind of species. I used red oak, and it, as you know, red oak is just absolutely full of grain. And uh, even though I had the grain going the right way, based on these uh, marks here, uh, it still was too severe and, and too easy to catch. All right, now, having learned that I did that wrong, uh, and I'll never do it again, what should I do? Well, I think the first rule is don't worry about the snipe. <laughs> why, why would I not want to worry about snipe on my really nice jaw for my vice? Well, what, I, what you should do is leave your boards longer than you need them and let the snipe appear, if any, on the part of the board or workpiece that you don't need. And then you can just cut things to proper length when everything is done. So in other words, I should have left my one long piece instead of cutting it to two pieces exactly the right length and then laminating them and then trying to pass that through my planer without getting any snipe. That was stupid. Leave extra length on the workpiece and then you're not going to get, you get your snipe on the waist area and then cut cut it to length after. So always think about the order in which you, you do things. And if you're going to laminate something and then put it back through your thickness planer later to clean it up and you don't want snipe, then leave it too long. Then when you finally put it through the thickness planer, go ahead and cut off the snipe if you have any. All right. Some other ways is to make sure that your beds are level. Also, if you I've seen some people construct longer beds, and the whole point of that is to support your workpiece for a longer time. Because if you put a workpiece into your thickness planer, there's a good example of small workshop. But if you put a workpiece into your thickness planer and you got a heavy end here, and you kind of let it tip up, even though there's a roller there to kind of catch it and start putting it through, it's going to tip up and get into that blade and you're going to get the snipe across there. Furthermore, when it's coming out the back side, if you let this push down, because this is a fairly short, you know, bench top 
planer bed here, then that will tip up on the way out. So my instruction manual actually says when you're feeding the workpiece in, these are level hopefully, lift the back end of here up a little bit until it gets properly engaged in that back roller. All right, and then support it when it comes out. Make sure you catch the end of it and you pull that up a little bit as it's exiting from the planer. For my little wind thickness planer here, I don't get any snipe if I do that. So I'm not going to fool around with any little missiles in the future. I'm just going to use my proper technique when I put it through there. That is my uh, kick back on my thickness planer story. And I hope I've uh, kept you from getting harmed. The other thing, remember, is don't stand right back here where the missile is going to shoot at you. Uh, when you're putting your board through, make sure you stand to the side and, and get them in there so that you're out of the line of fire if some freak occurrence does happen. Uh, I hope that will help you uh, keep your ears, keep your eyes, keep your uh, ribs, and avoid any kind of a kickback happening. Or if it does happen, uh, let it go past you. If that's helpful, if you think that might be helpful and save you in the future, then give me a like. Give me a comment. I really, really enjoy comments. You know, I got very, very few subscribers, so it's lonely out here in my little small workshop. So give me a comment so I can comment back to you and we can have a little uh, woodworking community going. Small workshop guy signing off and hoping that you'll be safe with your thickness planer.